Yo, what's going on gamers? Wanted to give you a quick guide on the Hallowed Layer Grandmaster Nightfall. I did this run on my Warlock. I'm using Shadebinder. I also did a run on my Titan. Bottom Tree Hammers worked the best. I ran Banner Shield. I wasn't impressed. But we're going to get right into it. So we're going to use Shadebinder with the basic setups here. Aspects using Bleak Watcher and Ice Flare. Torment, Rendering, Durance, and Bonds. I ran the Kinetic Bow from Garden with Telesto and Threaded Needle. This combo felt really good. Particle Deconstruction, Protective Light, Reactive Pulse for that Overshield, and the Unstoppable and Overload mods. I really like Protective Light with Taking Charge, and the Reactive Pulse helped on Finishers because I have Special Finisher on to give me pretty much unlimited Telesto ammo. This first room, you're just going to spray down the enemies, wait for this Unstoppable to come, and give them that sauce. As you see here, Telesto just absolutely melts them. What we noticed here was to look top right for those enemies and see if they spawned. If they're clear, we're going to push on to this next room and worry about the sniper to the right. These red bars or orange bars were the most annoying guys to fight because some of them would spawn those little baby screebs. Oh, yes. I know you guys have been blown up by those a couple times. The reason why I like this kinetic bow with explosive heads so much with the Telesto pair is just because I always felt like I had long range and short range to kill the group of ads. This nightfall was mainly based off of ad clear and controlling the ads, and you'll see that in the boss room. There is a few tricks in the in the plate rooms that I will show you, but pretty much I'm just focusing on hitting special finishers to make sure that I have unlimited Telesto ammo. Now with stasis and even my Telesto, I felt like I didn't need to run Arc or Solar just because I could spam through the shields. Usually you can't do that in Nightfalls, but with Particle Deconstruction, it felt really strong enough for me to do that. So we didn't have to worry about running Solar and Arc. You could pretty much run whatever you want. I know some people were running Tikus and other loadouts, but I just felt like this one, I felt more comfortable. Like I felt like I could stay alive. I felt like I could shoot the champs. I didn't have to worry about heavy ammo. I just could always defend myself. That sniper that I'm shooting up there it's very important that you kill him. In this run, we died a couple times. Why don't we uh, show him how we die here, Mr. Sneak? Yeah, just hold still real quick, Sneak. Just stand here. Ah, yes. There we go, Mr. Sneak. Thanks for the great demonstration there. So yeah, kill that guy up top left and don't forget about his buddies to the right. This room, oh boy. When you see what we did in this room, it might make you go bald a little bit just like me. What I'm doing here is looking for the sniper on the top right and top left. These little guys will destroy you one shot. And with those little electricity bolts coming from that unstoppable. And that little... You see, you've seen them, chat, right? You've seen that little itty bitty scream. They hide in walls, they hide in stairwells, and they blow up. They are the enemy. So we're going to take these guys out to make sure that we don't have any issues. Once you take down the unstoppable and the overload, you're going to get ready for the plate. Fun thing about this plate, ladies and gentlemen, we call it the big toe strat. You're going to hop off this plate before it hits the very bottom and you will not spawn the walker. So you can clear the ads without the walker being in the room and then just fight the walker one on one. As you see here, dancing, celebrating, jumping off. The plate did not go down all the way and we're going to take out these ads. We're going to have multiple ads right here. Watch out for the baby screams and two unstoppables. These unstoppables will spawn on the left and right with a whole bunch of their buddies. Guess what? If you stay in this room like we are doing now, you do have a chance to die. You're playing risky here. You can't stand still. You're constantly moving around. These ads don't like it when you run around the room. They just can't aim at you. And you'll see that in the boss room. But here's where the Telesto comes into play. I kill the baby screeb. I kill the ads. Make sure that we're not getting overran by those ads because just because it's two three ads you don't only have to kill them but you have to kill the little screams as you've seen there they were hiding in the walls they actually hide in those stairwell when they hide in that stairwell they will literally blow up out of nowhere that unstoppable almost killed me there but hey now we get to play our range now i can finally use the heavy i really don't have to use my heavy the whole nightfall it's kind of nice the boss doesn't even have a lot of health right here we're going to Stun this champ, get him out of here, and spawn that walker. So, when we spawn this walker, usually you take out a leg, DPS the walker boss, and then more adds spawn. Here, we're going to show you how to skip that phase. You are going to damage two legs at once. If both legs break, you get maximum damage, and you can kill the tank in one break. 
So what's gonna happen here is they're gonna work on the left leg. I'm gonna spray at the right leg. When both legs crack, the walker's going to have one bar of health left. Now we can easily take down the walker by ourselves and move on to the next room. I know a lot of people got stuck here, but hey, when we test stuff out, we find cool little tips and tricks like this. When you get into the double plate room, you're gonna take your time here. There's a lot of snipers in the back, a lot of mini screebs, lots of trash ads that will literally destroy you, and plenty of overlobes and unstoppables and an abomination with more health than any raid boss in this game. So what you're going to do is, is you're going to jump on the plate, activate the plate, when the ads spawn, jump off, kill the enemies, jump back on the plate, complete the plate, and then clear the ads. You're gonna do this with both plates. That way you can control the enemies that spawn in waves and you're only killing one wave at a time. I felt like when you get over ran in this room, someone can die in a very bad position. I died in this room plenty of times just being in a bad position. So I wanted to find a way to not have the community run into the same problem that I had. I didn't take any risks here. I didn't need to spawn my super here, but I just did it anyway just to take my time. As you see, all the ads are complete. I thought there were there was more ads, but again, we're taking our time. So, if you can, hold on to that super and try and not panic pop like I did. So this corrupted guy, those guys hurt, those will one-shot you. As you see, the plate on the right is complete. We're clearing this last round of enemies, and we're gonna do that with the same plate number two. Once both plates are complete, here comes the abomination with more health than any raid boss I've ever seen. What we're gonna do here is spawn trap these enemies. We wanna make sure these guys are absolutely spawn trapped. Sneak here was throwing some freezy stuff over there just to get a super back and boom, down goes the beaver. So this guy, Mr. Vengeful Hand, thinks it's funny to have all this health. You can waste so much ammo. But again, this is why I'm using a DPS weapon as my energy weapon. I have unlimited ammo. I can hit special finishers. This is why I wanted to run this build because I didn't want to rely on Aeons or someone having to run Aeons. I don't like running Aeons, period, in Nightfalls. But again, we're gonna freeze these enemies. Mr. Thor is talking in the background. I think he's saying hi to you guys and he's welcoming you guys here for watching the YouTube video. It's having a rough night. Anyways, we're gonna get back to it. We're gonna kill this guy. I'm just gonna keep peek shotting him, making sure that I'm destroying him. I want to make sure that I'm getting the enemies down. Also, if I can take down any champs or freeze any enemies, I'm going to do that while trying to fight this guy. As you've seen, I just get overran here. As I move my position, I wanted to come help out Mr. Sweat. That guy's going to die. And we can go around, pick up ammo, or I can hit some finishers to move on to that next room. Again, sometimes freezing these overload champions is kind of annoying. But hey, what's nice about staggering these champs is, is you can keep them alive go around the room and get your ammo and then focus on going to the next room right here you want to focus on that top left sniper up there there's actually a sniper up there yeah nice aim Clyde we want to kill him first because he's killed me in plenty of the nightfalls previously I've ran so I didn't want to deal with this guy once you move to the right and kill a couple of ads on the ground you're gonna find a overload champion once this overload dies you're gonna spawn the two unstoppable champs on the bridge. It's very important that you're gonna focus in on the far snipers. These far snipers were literally the enemy. Not only are you trying to battle snipers on this bridge and two unstoppables, you got many screebs crawling underneath the bridge trying to come blow you up. It's very annoying. So when we spawn these, I'm immediately focused on the back, taking out my bow and trying to shut them down because those guys can literally <laughs> snipe me from here and destroy me. I don't want that to happen. Those guys killed me multiple times, especially that guy in the middle that I'm killing right now. Here's where the Telesto is going to come into play. I could stun both champions at once. It's so nice. Literally just melt them. I was, I was very impressed by this weapon. I don't understand why it's so good, but man, it feels good. Here's that overshield with reactive pulse, hitting that finisher, moving on to the boss fight. Right now in the boss fight, people need to understand that this is all about ad control. When you first start the fight, 
Ads are going to spawn on that right side of the room. As you see, that little mini Screeb is going around, and we are split up. We are never on the same side together as a team, because one person can go down and you can have a problem. Once you whittle the boss down a little bit more, you are going to have ads spawn on the left. So it's right side first, then the left side. As you see here, one ad can literally end my career, so I'm moving back and playing my life, mainly because these guys spawn the mini Screebs, and it's just a big headache. Most of the time we shoot the boss, we are using either our kinetics or I'm using Telesto shots because the boss doesn't have a lot of health. And if you spawn more adds in the later end fight, doing too much damage to the boss, you will spawn the adds and he will freeze you out of the air. Once you've finished the first phase, we grouped up on the right, put my turret in the middle to control the adds of coming behind us. And this is where we funnel the adds up on the right side. This was used great. And if you tether here, if you're on a hunter, these mini screams actually blow up from your tether. But we always found it as throw the grenades out in the middle, freeze the enemies trying to come behind us, and channel all the adds coming to us right now. That was unlucky, Mr. Sneak. So, now we're going to freeze these adds. We see that the ad clear is pretty much good and we're going to deal with a overload champion while you're fighting this overload you can simply stun him and go around the room and find that ammo once you kill him you're going to start the second phase of the fight here's where he's going to tether you and this is very annoying you're going to have ads spawn on that left side make sure you're away from the ads moving control as you see i'm moving away very far throwing out my turret and killing them from range why i don't want to be by them because we can easily get shredded by these enemies i know it's not really being a team player being over here but trust me you don't want to die because once these enemies start spawn up in the middle again we need to be ready to go this is where we're going to channel them to the right side again chain our supers and kill the unstoppable the unstoppable is going to spawn and that's the one we need to take care of to move to the next round but again, you can slow you can slow play this fight and come to this phase when you would like. Once you get him below that health bar, go ahead and take down his shield once more and wait for him to spawn another wave of adds. Once those wave of adds come on the left side, you will take those adds out and we don't start damaging the boss to take us into that final round until we were ready. Once he tethers us one more time, we take down his shield and give him that final bake. I really hope this run and guide helped you and kind of gives you an insight on how to control the boss fight and all through the nightfall. And we'll see you next time, gamers.